This week, we're gonna talk about internal gains, specifically number of occupants, block load amounts, and adjustment options. Welcome back, I'm Chris Morin with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week we're talking about internal gains. This is the first thing that most contractors have issues with when it comes to heat gains and using Manual J version eight software. You see, if you were just doing square feet per ton, that doesn't take into account internal gains. And internal gains is not something you can easily add for without using software. The first place people go astray is when they add occupants to the home. The number of occupants in the manual J load calculation should always be number of bedrooms plus one. That means two in the master bedroom. Now, when you're doing a block load calculation, this is really easy. You just add the total number of people. But where do we put them when we're doing a room by room load calculation? There's actually an easy answer for this. You should locate them where you believe the occupants will be in the home at peak load. We're talking four or 5 p.m. in the middle of summer. There may be somebody in a bedroom, like my 11 year old daughter. She might be playing on her iPad. I'm willing to bet there might be somebody in the kitchen cooking dinner and the rest of them may be in an entertainment room. Wherever they will be at 4 or 5 p.m. in the middle of summer is where you should put them in your room by room load calculation. It doesn't sound like a lot of BTUs per person, but it can impact the duct design. The second mistake I see a lot of people make is around block load amounts. There's usually three options for block load amounts. The first one is 1200 BTUs per hour. And this is really just what's needed for the base kitchen. 1200 BTUs an hour is just enough to cover your refrigerator and a range. The most popular block load amount that you should be using is 2400 BTUs per hour. And this is scenario two in most Manual J version eight software. This covers the refrigerator, a range with a vented hood, a dishwasher, a washer and a vented dryer, and typical electronic and lighting equipment. More often these days though, with larger homes and multiple kitchens sometimes, we see scenario number three used, which is 3,400 BTUs per hour. This will cover two refrigerators. I personally like to use this if I see a refrigerator and maybe a freezer in a home. The same range with a vented hood, dishwasher, washer and dryer, and the normal electronic equipment and lighting. But when we're doing a room by room load calculation, we have the ability of adding other adjustments to each room. And sometimes your manual J version eight software, ones like Wrightsoft, will actually have other options in there for a living room. Now we can't make this a stock list for every light in the house or every appliance being on at four or 5 p.m. But if there's a legitimate reason that we should account for the heat gained in those spaces, during your peak load, four or 5 p.m., you need to make sure you add them. The number one thing I see that impacts sizing is these canned lights I usually see in kitchens. Now these are the halogen ones that put off a lot of heat, not your LED lights. If you're doing a site survey and you can put your hand up and not feel any heat coming off of a light or let's say a television because it's LED, then you probably don't need to add any adjustment for that room. But if you put your hand up to that DLP appliance or the halogen bulb, there is a significant adjustment that you can add for these because of the amount of heat coming off it in the middle of summer. As an example, just five 100 watt lights can add over 1700 BTUs. This can change the size of the duct that's needed for that kitchen, let's say. Or if you have what a lot of people call a man cave, downstairs in your basement and there's large TVs and stereos and you're using all of that for gaming purposes, maybe a small IT room in some instances for these residences, that could be easily over 1400 BTUs added for that room. And don't forget ceiling fans. If you're gonna operate that ceiling fan in the summertime, there's as much sensible gains from that ceiling fan for a 75 watt motor, that would actually equal 250 BTUs per hour, the same as a person. Of course, person's gonna be latent. Ceiling fan's gonna be sensible. Now keep in mind, you're not gonna add a lot of internal gains for things that don't meet code, like an unvented dryer. If you look in manual J, it says you just gotta vent that thing. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.